Okay, final episode. What a good way to end it with some lovely old dovetailing. Um, so before I did anything, I had to glue a spacer in the internal parts of the drawers, drawer cavity, um, because it kind of stepped back from the front leg, so I had to put a little block in like that, as you can see in the diagram there. And to clamp that in place, I just use a space that was the same width as the drawer. Uh, and because I'm fussy, I wanted to have the grain on the drawers go like as horizontal as possible. So here I'm just cutting an angle in the edge of the block of wood to match the direction of the grain. Um, and I'm just planing a flat face on that and then the flat edge. So then it's nice and straight. Rip that just over size. So this is the height of the fronts of the drawers. And that was enough to get me enough for all three drawers, um, but I had to do some fancy book matching for it. So with book matching, you can obviously open it like a book, or you can open it lengthways as well. And this was the way that I was going to be book matching it. Um, unfortunately, it's hard to explain, but basically the sizes didn't allow me to do it properly, so I basically had to get either side out of one of those blocks and then the middle one out of another so it's not a proper continuation all the way across but it is from the same block of wood so it's a colour match it's just not a grain match as such on some dovetailing so here I'm just using a marking gauge to establish the base lines of all the joints so that base line there at the bottom of the tails and here I'm marking the depth of the tails into the front of the drawers this is the height of the tails I'm marking now. This is the tails going into the back um, component. And I'll just get it all laid out to make sure I have marked them correctly because you know the amount of drawers that you cut in an S shape when you're a furniture maker, it's so annoying, so annoying. Now here I'm marking out the one in eight ratio for the dovetails. Um, in terms of ratios, you'll hear a lot of people say, oh, you have to use 1 in 8 for hardwood, you have to use 1 in 7 for softwood, or 1 in 6 for softwood. Uh, in my opinion, it's a load of bollocks. There is cabinets that have lasted 500 years that are cut at 1 in 4 ratios. Yes, it's true that the steeper you cut those tails, it's going to be shorter grain at the top, but as long as you're careful about it, once it's glued in place, it doesn't really matter. It's the same mechanical joint that it's going to be no matter what ratio you've got so choose whichever one fits your design and stick with that don't listen to people who say oh you've done it wrong because you haven't it's what works best with your design in the case of this one in eight looks really good boxes when they're smaller dovetails i usually do one in six to make it a little bit more emphasized um haven't ventured to one in four yet i'll admit uh, it looks too steep for me but if you like it do it um anyway rant over <laughs> um this is the new concept um, fret saw, which is something that uh, David Barron endorses quite a lot. He's quite a good YouTuber, lots of good videos on dovetailing, and I can vouch for it, it's an absolutely amazing coping saw. Um, as I've said in previous videos, if you want to know what sort of tools I'm using, or you see something I use but I don't mention what it is, I'll put a link to my website in a card in the top corner, um, and that shows you all the equipment I use, and it gives you a little overview of each of them as well, what I think of them, what I use them for. So yeah, if you have any questions about any of it, you can ask me on Twitter or something like that, but most of the information is there about what tool it is and what it's used for and such. So now I'm just chopping out the waste between the dovetails. Obviously the coping saw, uh, fret saw doesn't quite get to the bottom of those shoulder lines uh, crisply. Is that the word? Crisply? Oh, always drop it there. Right. Um, so yeah, chisel it back to that. I do a small undercut on dovetails, like, you know, with undercuts don't go so over the top, at the end of the day an undercut is an undercut. If you undercut the dovetail by 0.3 degrees, it's still undercut, it's, <laughs> it's basic logic, but if you start angling the chisel like 5 degrees then you just create a huge hollow joint between them, so, um, anyway there you go, there's an all chiseled out, ready to go. Now to mark the tails onto the front, um, the front of the drawers. So I get a um, component that's level behind it so I can rest the tails on that. 
get everything nice and lined up. And make sure it doesn't move and mark around that with a sharp knife. In this case, I'm using um, a Swan Morton blade. I think it's called the SM01. I'll have to double check that. Um, but it's incredible for marking out dovetails because it's a slightly thicker blade. Um, it doesn't flex and you can actually resharpen it as well because it's got a bevel on the back. It's like resharpening the chisel. Um, so yeah, I'll put a link to those in the description because they're very good and very cheap as well, easily replaceable. So yeah, it's a good investment. So obviously I'm quite a barbarian when it comes to getting the waist out. I just do it with a drill to be honest and then um, smash it out with a chisel. the side walls just to refine it back to that knife line. You've got to be very careful when you do this. It's like surgery. <laughs> I've put a small chamfer on the back of the tails as well just to help locate it in place and if there's any crap in the bottom of the sockets as well it just stops that from preventing the tails from seating properly. Tap it in nice and evenly. Considering it's the first dovetail I cut in about a year, it's all right, it's all right. Now with the two angled draw fronts on either side of the cabinet, it's difficult to get the sides cut so that it's square at the back. So what I was doing there was marking the angle of the draw fronts onto my table and then assembling the front and the sides. I can line the front up with that angle on the table on the workbench, like so. Mark a small line on the back to the point in which that I want it to start being cut square and then square that line across and mark it on the opposite component there. So then those are perfectly square at the back but it's still angled at the front. And here I'm gang cutting which is when you put two components of or two tails together and cut them both at the same time it saves effort and it makes everything more um, more uniform I suppose it also allows you to cut square because you've got a bigger reference point with the saw rather than trying to cut square on a thinner piece of timber if you've got a wider reference point it's easier to register uh, the back of the drawers are a little bit weird um, very difficult to explain you need to look at them closely to see how they're constructed but Essentially, you need to make it offset at the top so it creates an air gap when you're pushing it in and at the bottom as well so you can slide the base in after it's assembled. And I found some offcuts of, I think this was cherry. It's weird because it smells like cedar, but I think it's cherry. I think it might have been because it was stored in the same drawer as cedar or something like that, but it kind of looks the same. So, um, Cedar is like a traditional material to use on the inside of drawers and inside of cabinets because it smells nice um, and it also prevent, prevents moth attack and stuff like that so inside wardrobes it's quite good but, um, yeah I'm just trying to stick to tradition with this one so that's it all glued up or veneering in the press and then I cut those to size on the table saw and then using the um, angled fence match the angle of the side drawers. There we go, slide them all in place. And of course, you've got to do the uh, compulsory Instagram story as well so you know if you want great content like this follow me at Matt Isley Furniture because you know you'll see amazing things like that. <laughs> yeah. it, a follow would be lovely thank you <laughs> uh, so there's a drawer gluing up that was a royal pain that was horrible look how many clamps I'm using for one drawer um, anyway planing the backs flush 
and then screwing them in place. There you go. Notice how the screws are all clocked as well, uh, in that they're all rotated to the same angle. You know, it's little things like that make the difference. Uh, plain it will flush, so it's all nice and flat. And then to fit the drawers, you see they're a little bit tight here. If you put them in and then like just keep rubbing them against the sides like that, always get them stuck, that could have been bad. Um, keep rubbing them like that and then little burnished spots will appear on the sides, especially if you've waxed the inside. Then it will show you where it's rubbing and then you can just plane that back each time. Now these are the stops I'm using, or the little drawer latches. So those go to the back. The block that I attached it to is oversized. So what that means is when I slide, slide the drawer in, it doesn't go all the way in. So with that, I can then measure how much it's sticking out and remove that from the block that's attached to the latch. There you go. Pop that at the back. Shove the drawer in and then it stops flush. I think, oh, that one went a little bit further than expected. Um, but what I did with that is just got a small bit of veneer and put that behind the latch so it spaced it out again. You'll never see it. There you go, get all the corners flush with the uh, cabinet and then draw a line all around it. I did actually quite like how they stuck out from the cabinet. I, it wouldn't have worked for this, but I think it's quite a cool effect that I might use later on. Like using flat drawer fronts, but in a curved carcass. I think it was quite cool. It's like a it's like a different way of producing a finger hold. Anyway, here's all the rough cuts on the bandsaw. So I did a few relief cuts uh, to make it easy on the bandsaw blade. There we go. Nice and close to the line, and then refine it on the bobbin sander. The start up on this thing is just insane. <laughs> it starts so quickly, it's amazing. It's like some old Wadkin uh, Second World War machine, it's just insane. I love it. And because that's quite rough on there, I refine it with a spoke shave. Save sand later on. So you can see the marks from the bobbin sander there, there's like white patches. This is what the uh, spoke shave gets rid of. Gets it to a nice brown, even texture, and then I can sand that afterwards. Now, these latches, they're a bit of a nightmare to glue in place, obviously, because it's difficult to get pressure in there. So what I did is use double-sided tape, cut a series of lines in it, And then alternatively peel up those lines so that I get a um, like a zebra effect. Zebra effect? Oh, you know, <laughs> looks like a zebra, doesn't it? And then put glue in those parts there. So the sticky tape would act as my clamp, and the glue would be my permanent clamp. And then I had a whole face on the bottom that I could glue it to. It's worth bearing in mind that I removed the wax in the corners. Uh, before gluing them in place, obviously, because or else that glue wouldn't have worked across forever. So I sanded the wax off and got a uh, polish remover in there as well. But there you go, that's all the drawers in place. Um, next video will be a nice compilation of the entire project and then you'll see the finished result. So hope you look forward to that and uh, yeah, see you then.